All right, so it's that time of year. You can see the snow around me. You can see there's plenty of ice, enough ice actually to bring four wheelers on the ice right now. And we're doing a little pike fishing. Uh, we actually don't have much time today. This is the second episode of the day we have tried to film here. And uh, you can see right now exactly when it is. There's no reflection there. 4.43 p.m. January 18th. And what that means is it's about to get dark here in the next hour. We have one hour to see how many pike we can catch out here on the ice. We have about, oh, maybe eight to 12 inches of ice depending on where we are. Uh, we're gonna show you right now, Mitch is over here. We're using Markham units, little small Markham units to show our firebrine bait down there. You can see it right in the middle of the screen. We're gonna see how many pike we can catch here oh, there's one right on the in about one hour. You got one coming right in? Yep. All right, so Mitch has got one coming in. Uh, and, and just so everybody knows, this is not a small lake. Take a look. Not, John's on. Not a small oh. lake. Oh, got off? He got off. All right, all right, get it back on again. This is not a small lake, okay? We are, we are in public water here. Uh, it's a very popular lake. As a matter of fact, we filmed here uh, three days ago, and there were probably a couple hundred people on the ice. So these aren't our pet pike that are biting baits and we go over there and tap them on the tail and say, hey, grab that chartreuse bait for us. These are fish, they live here all the time. And we're hoping to show you a few more of them here in the last hour a day, winter ice fishing. All right, so John's getting ready to go down and drop his bait. Yep, I go. believe that is a pink fire brine herring. Yes, it is. some pink fire dye, you can see. We drop it in the water, it's not gonna lose its color. Watch this, see that? Maintains all the color. He's gonna drop it down there, and you are gonna see this thing on film. Look at the color. Everybody knows that pike are attracted to scent, there and they're attracted to color. This one has both. It's got real scent of a herring, and it's got some pretty exciting colors. And the cool thing is, we're actually in only three feet of water right now, and that's the cool thing about targeting pike through the ice, is you gotta target the weed beds and structure down there. Right now, as you can see on all the underwater film, we are on a very thick weed bed. Move your rod forward. And we're getting uh, pike passing through. Yeah. So it's been a cool experience. Okay, looks like we got another fish on over here. Did you just snake him from George? <laughs> <laughs> there he is, there he is. Oh, there's his head. This was a... Uh, this was on the uh, purple, or the blue. Blue? The blue. I could see it. Nope, yeah. you actually have the pink. I can see it right there. Or is that yeah. George's? No, that's bait? George's. That's oh, George's. George's got pink. Yeah, we got. Well, you caught a pike in, George. Congratulations. What? Was got him. Anyways? You got him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fight out of this guy, huh? There he is. Not as big as the other one that swam through, but this is the one that took interest in it. Yeah. And he's all wrapped up, but he's no okay with the northern. Another beautiful high mountain northern here. We're just been clobbering them, and just another beautiful one on a blue fire dyed herring. Hi guys, how are you doing? Uh, we're out here fishing today for northern pike, and we're just going to go over a couple things with you real quick on the setup that we're using. So we're fishing with Okuma. This is the same R, the C10 reel from Okuma. It's a little micro reel, works really well in the cold conditions, got really, really nice drag. We're using a four pound test fluorocarbon uh, and it works good for the, the, um, the application that we're doing here today. The other one too that you'll probably see another video, we use a Cajun, it's a red line, same thing, four pound test and it's a monofilament. Um, so both of those are just been really good lines for us. Not a lot of twist. Work good in the application that we're doing. So what we're doing is we're, we have a um, little steel leader uh, tied to our monofilament or a fluorocarbon that we, that we use. And we have a, um, a VMC, it's just a little VMC uh, treble hook with a little silver spoon kind of on the end of it. Just kind of attract it when we're jigging our when we're jigging the lure or the, the bait. Now what we've got here, guys, is a it's a a, a smelt that's been dyed in our chartreuse uh, fire brine, 
and with the fire dye. And um, you can see, and it's like 5.30, I believe, right now. 5.30 right now. And it's getting to be fairly dark. And you can see how this thing just literally glows. I just took it off of the, <laughs> out of the bag. And you can see here, even in the snow, guys, how, how translucent that is. And what we're doing here is hooking it on the bait. I just like to take two trebles, just kind of bring it into the, through the back top, you know, the backbone area, kind of hang it. So the spoon hangs below it, just like so. That way when the bait's in the water, it's hanging horizontally. All right, we're about to drop this chartreuse fire dye, fire brine minnow down. Uh, that's a herring actually. Go ahead, Mitch. You're gonna see how they just glow in the water. Incredible. All right, so this is what's happening. Take a look straight down to that camera. Come on, camera, yeah, focus. It. He grabbed the bait. You can't even see it right now, but look at that tail. We'll see if Mitch can get he's it. He's got it. I might have to open the... Oh, he, he dropped it. He's going to come back oh, and hit you the see head. The... No, he's going to He's gonna come hit the head. We're right out on the side, he's got, unfortunately. He's got the head now. Okay, there he is. See him swimming with it? He's in his mouth. He's going to eat it. I'm just going to let him eat it. Look at that. 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 There we go. Just like that. Now, that's why it's awesome to have... <laughs> One of these Markham units where he just you just see him drop the bait after he got hooked. But we saw the whole thing wow. on camera. What a cool situation we have here. They are absolutely crushing these fire brine and fire dye herring and smelt. And here he comes. He's 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 struggling to get his head through the hole. No, but, uh, hooked on, there we go. He's hooked on the side of the yep. ice. Here he comes. Just like that. Using these and another one. I'm just using little medium light rods, so you always got to play them a little easy. You guys just watch this northern just crush it on film right off the drop, and we're going to get them back in the water, and we're going to throw another chartreuse one in the water and get another one. And there he goes. Nice and lively. Let's and he's out of here. He's still there. You see him? He's staring at it. All right, so we see the chartreuse bait. The, you can see the pike looking at it coming down. He's going to take it. He's going to take it right now. So he just ate it on film. You guys are watching this just like we are. Come on. He's going to take the rest of it. Oh, he just dropped it. He'll hit it again. <clears throat> He'll hit it again. Here it comes again. Still there. Look at it. He just crushed it. Oh. <laughs> Spit it out again. He's going to hit it again. Look at that. There he goes. Nope. <laughs> Mitch is wanting him to take the hook portion of it, not the tail portion of it. Well, he's hitting the head. Yeah, so there he goes. Like to hit the head, so let's see. Oh, there he goes. I think he just bite. ate the whole thing. Nope. Nope, he dropped it again. This guy's toying with us. He must see the camera. He's showing off for everyone. He doesn't look like he's that small of a fish either on the camera. Now we're kind of blocked by his he's turning around. build. And I think he has the whole thing in his mouth. Nope, he's swimming around it. Now he's going to whack it again. All right, so we're gonna come back around here and watch him do it one more time. Or not. Oh, there he comes. There come he on. goes again. Come on. What is and folks, doing? just so you know, this is not a private pond, okay? <laughs> we are out here in the middle oh, yeah, of a populated oh, area. Oh my oh, God, another my guy just tried goodness. to crush him. Got it out of the way. Oh my God, oh, oh, oh my God, oh, he crushed it. He crushed it. Wow. Three fish on screen. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at that. Oh, and there See you go. See you later, buddy. Hey, these. we got what we wanted from Wow, you. that was <laughs> wild, dude. <laughs>
and just because we went through so much bait today so we have to <laughs> just restock hot bait on demand it's just so crazy this is the pink he's going to put a couple more you can see the pink and then we actually have some chartreuse as well now we'll be honest with you if you get a 24-hour soak on these they're going to look incredible and they're not going to wash out okay if you get a five minute soak on them they're still going to look good as long as you use the brine and the dye so we're going to show you how simple this process is that's it guys no rocket science at all all right so what's happening here is you see this juice right there that's not really juice that is natural fire brine okay uh, we had that in there last night we used up uh, so many of the red uh, that's pink blue and chartreuse that we had to take the naturals and put them in there so what that means is those natural braids have already been brine which means they're going to stay strong they're going to stay tough we're going to take the fire dye now this is the chartreuse we're going to add some more fire dye in there to give it instant color okay we have some but we're going to put some more in there okay this is the pink we're going to add an extra squeeze in there and this is the blue okay we're going to add an extra squeeze in there. What that's going to do is, remember, the fire dye does one thing. It dyes the bait, okay? That's the chartreuse. We're going to use the fire dye to, to dye it way more quickly because it's already been brined. And there is the blue, okay? This is pink. A lot of you might think it's red. The red is a completely different color. This is pink, okay? Now, the key is, if you want to simply do a short soak like this the dye will take the bait instantly we've already brined these overnight okay the difference is you got another fish yeah. <laughs> my gosh i was trying to be quiet we're just there's too many fish right here yeah another oh, oh, he he jumper. Right you got a jumper hole. you got a jumper <laughs> all right so that is a herring right now and you can see how well this herring has taken the natural fire brine okay you've seen a lot of colors that's the natural the reason why we're doing it it toughens that bait up, you know, makes it a little bit more durable. And you can see the scales shining on there. And Mitch is gonna put it down and show you why it's important to do that. If you just take a bait right out of the freezer type of thing, you'll have freezer burn on it. It'll break apart in pieces. This bait is only gonna break apart because we're gonna think of Pike's about to whack him. All right, so that's one of the natural baits that we put in there. It's been five minutes since the blue fire dye was added to the brine that was already in there. Look at the colors on this. Look how it shines. We're gonna drop it in the water. And it's not gonna last long because the pike just love these things. But you can see the color is not washing off. All right. And we're gonna come over here and you're gonna see him, hopefully, in a second. The, Might be spun the, around the wrong the way. The goyer is terrible. We'll get it in a second. But it just shows you the quality of baits we have here when you do it properly. This is a nice fish. All right. What color did you have? Blue. Is it close? Oh, I see a whole pile of weeds. I saw his head. Yeah, I saw his head. There he is, right there. Come here, buddy. Uh -huh. He's right there. I see his. Yep. But I don't know what that is. Is he caught up in the camera? I know he's in the weeds. Oh, time to freeze my arm. Oh, no. <laughs> John got him, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy. Woo, that's cold. All right, got another nice pike on the blue fire brine smelt. Just sitting it right on the bottom. He came in, almost didn't get him on camera. He came in so fast, he just engulfed it. Woo, woo, got another one. Although tell me he's hooked up in the camera. Again? <laughs> Here we go again. Uh oh. The Armist Reach. Sorry, the Amish Reach. Here it comes. Oh, there he was. Watch and learn, folks. Here comes the Amish Reach. All the way from State College, Pennsylvania. Look at that. It's a Montana, yeah. baby. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we've been fortunate to film all across North America, whether it's for warm water species, whether it's for cold water species, whether it's for trout, salmon, steelhead, halibut, pike, it doesn't matter what it is. We always find great places to film. And you know, the one thing that we do, no matter how much we try to do good and be positive and promote fishing in a positive manner, there's always haters out there. Um, 
never ending amount of haters. You guys see them on all of our posts, you see them on your posts. Every time you catch a fish, there are haters. You know, it's just the way of the world right now. And we try not to let it get to us too much, but we had one guy that was so loud and obnoxious and, you know, your baits don't work. Why would anybody get a, a brine bait and put it through the ice? Doesn't need it, it's unnecessary. He told us, I don't believe you. Why don't you go out there and you show me that it works and then I'll believe you. So that's what we did. We flew and we found a place where we could find pike that would hope to bite beneath the ice. So we brought out there and we brought our favorite baits, the mix of chartreuse fire brine, chartreuse fire dye. We used blue fire brine and blue fire dye. We used pink fire brine and pink fire dye. And the reason why we do this, we've told you guys so many times, there's a difference between fire brine and fire dye, okay? Fire brine is very simple. Fire brine is one of those things you put on there to tighten up your bait, to make it flashy, to make it more durable, to make it last longer, it's a brine. Whereas fire dye is simply a dye. There's no scent to it at all. It's just one of the world's strongest dyes. And when you mix the two, you get a perfectly brined and a vibrant bait. So we came out here to show that one hater that this stuff does work. I called our good friends over at Markham. I said, guys, do me a favor. I need a loaner unit. We'll send it back to you as soon as we're done filming these videos. And we'll show the people exactly what we used. So they knew they would win. We knew we would hopefully get some pipe to do what we thought they would do. And that's cooperate. And this particular lake we're filming on right now is almost 350 acres. A lot of people are going to go, oh, well, you fished a tiny little pond. No, we didn't. We fished a 350 acre lake that had a lot of people on it. There's people all over the place here. And what we also did is we came in here and used these baits and we grabbed that Markham camera and dropped it below the water. And you'll often see these fish come in and they would crush some of these baits, whether it was the blue whether it was from the chartreuse, whether it was from the pink, whether it was the natural, they absolutely demolish these baits. As a matter of fact, you'll see some underwater videos where these pike are going in there and pushing each other out of the way to grab that bait. Now, there were other videos where we were watching this Markham camera, seeing when pike would come in, and we would let the pike take it, let the pike take it, let the pike take it, and not set the hook, just simply because we wanted to see what they would do with that bait. So. You're gonna have a great time today watching exactly what we did and showing you that, yes, if you brine and dye a bait, it makes a difference in your catch. Some of these are herring, those are the larger ones. The smell to the smaller ones, it's no different than if you go buy a bass lure in the store. Why are there so many different colors of the lures? Why are there so many colors of worms? Why are there so many colors of plugs? It doesn't matter what you are, what species, there's different colors because fish are attra attracted to different colors and different light conditions and at different times of day, which is why we did this today, filming Potsky Outdoors beneath the ice with these dyed and brine baits to show you that even if you're a hater out there, a hater can't say these baits don't work when we're being filmed with the camera. Remember, this is beneath the ice. We don't know when fish are coming. We can't call them in like it's a pet. They come, they investigate, and they demolish these baits, just like you'll see here on Potsky Outdoors. Potsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to Potsky.com.